All right, hey everybody, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining. My name is Shane, and this is the HTML Building Block Series. In today's lesson, we're going to cover some more form uh, input elements. We are going to cover using select boxes. We are also going to cover a new HTML5 element called data list. Pretty neat stuff. Data list is cool. I like it. You'll like it. And we're also going to cover an element called opt group, option group. Hey, if you're not familiar with those, I definitely recommend you check them out. We're going to jump right in. All right, so hey, as usual on my desktop, I have an HTML page prepared called index.html. It has a basic style sheet, which is a little padding, nothing much there. I've got my head, body, and a form element along with a field set and a legend. Uh, if you're not familiar with those elements, check them out in my previous HTML building block videos. I went ahead and prepared code ahead of time so we can go through these uh, quickly. Definitely feel free to stop the video and type the code out or download the code from the codingzoo.com. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in. So for my first example, I've created this div here that has a regular select box. So a select box is a way of having basically a drop down, a drop down where a user can see multiple choices. It's multiple choice and you can choose. Well, it gives you multiple choices and you can choose one choice with the basic functionality you can choose one choice so i have a label called single select and i created a select element i gave it an id and a name now the name of course is what's submitted to our mock server uh, in this case we submit back to our current page so this is the select element now with the select element you give it options so here's the option element. It has the attribute of value. Uh, now this value is what is passed to uh, your server or, or to wherever you're submitting to uh, when the user chooses a given option. So you have this text inside of your option tags. You have a begin option tag, an end option tag. You have a value which is submitted when you when a user selects that element. Um, the text in the middle is actually what's shown on the screen. So I might submit JS to the server as like a, a code for the language. Uh, but on the screen, I'm going to display the word JavaScript because maybe somebody doesn't know what JS or JV might stand for. So I have three options here. I have JavaScript, I have Java, and I have Python. Let's go ahead and see what the select box looks like. I'm going to save it. Here's my screen, click refresh, and here we go. So I have a single select box, and I should have three options. There we go, JavaScript, Java, and Python. Now if I choose one of them, it's, it went ahead and selected it. I'm gonna click Submit, and you'll notice that the code JV was passed for uh, Java. I chose Java. Now if I choose, if I leave it at JavaScript and click Submit, the code changed to JS. So this is a single select select box. And you of course can have as many options as you want in that select box. So pretty simple, pretty neat. Uh, let's move on to the next example. What if I wanted to have a select box that basically allows you to select multiple options? Let's take a look at that. I've got, again, the select element. I gave it an ID and a name. Now I added this attribute, so everything's pretty much the same as the first example, except to here. I added the attribute multiple. So I said multiple equal true. And I gave it a size of two. And I'll go over size with you in just a second. So here's my options again, same options. So the big difference is, is I had multiple equals true. Save it, click refresh. And there's my multiple select box. Now I put size equals two. Well, if you, there's three elements. Let's say, let's say there's 50 elements. Well, you don't want to show all 50 of them. Uh, you probably want to allow scroll, you want to allow scrolling, right? So 
I went ahead and set the size to two, so you can only see two at a time. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and set it to three. If I'm not going to have 50 or 25, I'm just going to have a few. You can go ahead and, and set it to um, just two, or set it to however many you have, rather. Uh, you can set it to one, and it would look just like this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to set it to three just to show you what it looks like. And I'm going to try something different. I wonder, could I get by just doing that? I'm going to click refresh. Um, and yeah, I can. So I don't have to do multiple equals true. I can just do multiple. So, all right. So I have a multiple select box and it allows me, well, what's the difference? Well, I can select more than one. Up here, I can only select one. Here, I can select um, multiple by holding down the control key. Or I can select multiple by holding down the shift key. All right. Now I'm going to submit this form. And there we go. So I have favorite lang equals JV, which was, which was the first one. Um, and then I have favorite lang again for three more times, which was the second element. Um, and that's a little confusing. Let's change that up real quick. I want to comment out this one. Try that again. Select, select them all and click submit. And now it changed to should have three favorite langs. There we go. So all three were selected. Let's select two. And there we go. I have two favorite lengths. Select one. And there's the one. So a, a multiple attribute allows you to select multiple items. Makes sense. Very simple. And if you see the camera moving like this, um, it's not an earthquake. I have a habit of hitting my desk. I'm going to have to fix that habit. All right. Let's move on to the next example. Or I could fix it in post. I'm going to comment this one out. You'd think I would learn the shortcut for commenting out sections of code in Visual Studio Code. Might be helpful. All right. So my next one example is uh, a multiple select, or rather a single select. And I'm using a new element called opt group. So you uh, a select box has options. And sometimes you have a lot of options. So it's hard to find things, right? It's hard to scroll down everything. So you can group those options into groups. They're called opt groups, option groups. That kind of makes sense, right? So here I have my select box, same as before. I have an option group, an opt group. I give it a label. The label is what's shown to the user. Uh, and I end the opt group element. And I have my options in the middle for that opt group. In this case, I've got label of scripting. These are scripting languages. And I have another opt group for compiled. And these are compiled languages. Let's save it. Click refresh. And there we go. So I have, let me clean up this real quick. Save it, refresh. So now I have an op group select box. And if I click down, you can see it. the options are divided into uh, different sections. I have a scripting section and I can't choose scripting. I can choose items in that section. Can't choose compiled, but I can choose C++ or C. Click submit and there goes my language being passed. Pretty neat, pretty simple. It makes it a lot better user experience when you're trying to find something. Op group is new to HTML5. Highly recommend it. Definitely use it. Neat stuff. All right, let's change it up a bit. That's a single select. Well, what if I wanted to select multiple? Will that work with the option groups? And if so, can you select multiple between different option groups or does it have to be in the same option group? Let's try it out. Save. Refresh. Okay, so it got a little bigger because um, I'm using 
uh, multiple. I can set the size with the size attribute. You learned that on the other example. But let's go here. I'm going to choose JavaScript and Python. Click Submit. And yeah, it's submitted both of them. And again, I'm using Control or Shift to select multiple. Now, that was in one option group. How about two option groups? I'm going to select JavaScript. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select C. Are they both still selected? They are. So there you go. It will even allow you to select different options in multiple option groups. Click Submit. I've got JavaScript and C. So that works great. Works great. All right. Hey, pretty neat. Let's go back to the code. I have one more example here. Okay. Comment that out. All right, so I have an input text box here. Now, this is in the select box, but it's a way of creating a select box. I'm using the input of type text. You can actually leave the type off and it'll work the same. Um, I put a name of state, an ID of state, and I use this attribute called list. Now, this list attribute can be used on multiple input types. You can use it on text. Uh, you can use it on range. It can be used with multiple input types. Um, now what this list attribute does is, is, is it specifies um, a data list to be put inside of this input element for the user to choose. So even though this is a text box, because I put list, it's going to give the user a select box, but it's going to give them a select box it's going to give them a select like box. It's really a text box that you can still type in stuff. Uh, in the select box, you notice you really couldn't type in, type in anything. You had to choose it, right? Um, this is going to give you a text box where you can type in stuff, but, but you can also select something out of a list. So let's save it. I, you know, well, first, let's look at the list. I've got data list. So the new element is called data list. It's also new to HTML5. Um, I'm specifying an ID for the list. That's the same ID that I used in this list attribute. Um, and here's where I put my options. So the options work the same as uh, they did with the select box. Um, let's go ahead and save it. Click refresh. Okay. It's like a regular input box, right? I click on it. There are my options. So it's actually letting me select uh, different ones. Now I can also type in something. So I typed in L and it stayed with Louisiana and then LA and it went there. And if I press enter, it didn't select it. Well, that's not so great, but, but if I press the down arrow key and select it, it kept it in the box. Okay. Well, well, did you notice what stayed in the box? So I wanted to choose Louisiana. Well, I may not know what LA stands for. So in this case, the option is showing both the code uh, that's going to get sent to the server, which is and the um, actual text of the option. So this is showing the value of the option. And this is showing the text that's inside of the option. Uh, in the select box, you would have only seen um, the uh, text that is between the option uh, tags, the begin and end tag. Um, but in this case, you're seeing both the value of the option and the text between the two tags. If I go back and look at the tags, there's the value and there's the text in between the two uh, tags, the begin and end tag of option. So that's one key difference. You can actually see both, um, which is cool because you can actually narrow down uh, by typing in information. So you see how I'm down to... Arkansas. Now, I wonder if I see there's a bunch of A's in there. It didn't really narrow it down there. Um, or did it? Did it choose? It looks like it's choosing words that have the letter A in it. Let's see what happens if I just do T. There you go. Yeah. So the typing is actually um, filtering by the text in between the option groups there. So if I put in T, I only see Texas, but I put in A, well, uh, there's no A in TX here, but there is an A in TX 
uh, T E X A S um, in Texas. I'm pointing at the screen here with my finger. I've done, that's the second time I've done that. I keep forgetting you can't see my finger. So if you look here on the screen, Texas, there's no A in the TX, but there is an A in Texas. That's why it's in the list. Now, if I click on X, well, only one of these on the right here uh, has an X. So it should just bring it up. There you go, Texas. So that explains how the typing filters. Click on Texas, click Submit, and there's my state equals Texas. So that's a data list. Pretty neat. I love it. Um, it can be used with multiple elements, uh, input elements. It can be used with the range, the text box, etc. Pretty neat. I definitely recommend you play around with it. You will like it. It's pretty awesome. So that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's lessons. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. If you liked today's lesson, go ahead and click like. If you disliked it, go ahead and click the dislike. Leave us a message though. Let us know how to improve the videos. Our goal at Coding Zoo is to help you learn how to program. So we want, we'd like to know how to make the videos better to do that. So that's, that's always helpful. Um, if you are not a subscriber and you'd like to see more of our videos, Click on the subscribe button below and click the bell icon. It'll alert you when we have more videos out. We cover HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, programming for the web, basically. And very soon, we're going to get into other languages such as Python and Java. Hey, thanks for joining today. We hope to see you again next time. Have a great week. Bye.